Hi guys, Blackbox here. Another tutorial, this time with the FS Labs A320X. And today we'll talk about decelerated and stabilized approaches. Now, airline pilots are told to fly as fuel efficient as possible. Um, also near airports you want to avoid unnecessary noise. And so most of the times you will be flying the decelerated approach. And since the weather is so bad here in Frankfurt, we'll go to a different destination. Um, I've chosen Mallorca. Um, right now we're just passing overhead Menorca. And the weather there is fine. And so it's a bit more for the eye, uh, i.e. a little bit more eye candy. And let's get started with, first of all, the approach type that is used most often and that is the so-called decelerated approach. But before I get into more detail, um, let me just recap the important difference again between the managed speed mode and the selected speed mode. Usually the approach, the descent, etc. is flown in the managed mode, i.e. the target speed is taken from the FMS and if air traffic control or certain other factors do not call for selected speed, i.e. an early speed reduction, you would leave the aircraft flying in the managed mode. And in that mode, the deceleration pseudo waypoint, I will show you later in the FMS uh, what that exactly is, um, that point assumes a so-called deceleration approach technique. And that means that the FMS is calculating an optimum descent path, a very fuel efficient descent path, um, with all the restrictions that should be um, inserted in the approach. Um, but it assumes a decelerated approach technique. But anyhow, uh, you as a pilot um, are responsible obviously for the correct flight profile and speed profiles. And so the ultimate target for you, uh, if you want to fly the decelerated approach, is that you will reach the final approach fix, i.e. that point where you intercept the glide slope um, on an ILS, that you reach that point at flaps 1 and S speed. So let me just show you a picture of um, what I exactly mean with that. So from the left, we can see that we are coming uh, towards the final descent point um, or final approach fix at a speed around 250, 230, thereabouts. And so if we're still in managed mode, um, what happens is that once we pass that pseudo waypoint or pseudo deceleration point, and that is the magenta circle with the uh, magenta D depicted on it, um, you'll see that on the NAV display. So once we pass that, you will see that the approach phase in the FMS will activate automatically. And then the aircraft will slow down automatically to the green dot speed. Um, that is the speed, the minimum speed in clean configuration. And there's nothing you have to do. Um, the auto thrust will reduce the thrust and the aircraft will decelerate automatically to the green dot speed. And about uh, two miles or one and a half miles before the final approach fix, we will then select flaps one and the auto thrust will reduce the thrust setting and the aircraft will decelerate towards S speed. Once it gets to S speed, the auto thrust increases thrust again to maintain S speed. Now, unless we have um, you know, strong tailwind or a steep glide slope angle, um, then flaps one will be enough to have enough drag on the aircraft um, that we can fly with idle power or near idle power on the glide slope until we get to about 2,500 feet above ground where we will start to uh, select flaps two. If there is strong tailwind or the glide slope angle is steeper than usual, then preferably you would select flaps 2 at glide slope interception to make sure that the aircraft doesn't accelerate and maybe go beyond VFE 
the uh, maximum speed for the current flap and slat setting. Now for the rest of the configuration of the aircraft, there is just one important um, point that has to be respected. And that is that 1000 feet above the threshold of the runway, you have to be at final configuration, uh, landing gear down, flaps three, flaps full, um, at the approach, and then on glide slope and localizer in order to meet the stabilization criteria for IMC conditions. So normally with a very little wind, you would start selecting flaps two at around 2,500 to about 2,300 feet above the threshold. Um, then after that, select gear down, flaps three, flaps full. That will give you enough um, buffer to reach that final configuration setting at 1,000 feet above threshold. Now, if you have a lot of headwind, for example, then you can delay that flaps two um, configuration a little bit more. Um, try it out, get experience um, with that, with the deceleration of the aircraft when configuring it. Um, and then, like I said, the important thing is the stabilization criteria at 1000 feet. Okay, so enough theory. Let's have a look how that looks like in practice. We've um, checked the weather for Mallorca, 2-4 left is going to be in use for the approach, so we expect ILS Zulu, 2-4 left. We've entered the QNH, the temperature, the wind, um, the minimum, we've entered the NAF aids um, for the approach. And yep, yeah, there we have everything set. Auto brake is low. And we can see our descent arrow coming up in about, what, 15 miles from here. Um, beyond that, well, we have Cap de Para at 4,500 feet above. And then, just before the next waypoint, we can see that Magenta Circle with the D in it. And that is the pseudo deceleration waypoint. As long as we are in NAF mode, then the automatic um, activation is possible. If we're not in NAF mode, then the D and the circle will be white. And in that case, the automatic activation in the FMS of the approach phase doesn't work. Just be aware of that, please. Up ahead, cap to para, and then, yeah, we have to cross that at four and a half thousand feet or above. And then we'll just continue on our arrival route. What I like to do um, is always enter the runway into the progress page of the FMS and that way I have the direct distance to the threshold and that helps me with my descent planning. So at the moment we can see the VDEF says we're minus six, uh, 750 feet. So let me just put in um, Mallorca 24 left and there we have 35 miles straight distance to the threshold. Let me uh, skip forward a little bit towards the uh, approach. Now we're approaching the pseudo waypoint, uh, that point where the deceleration phase will be activated automatically. And I'll show you that um, in the MCDU in a second. So well, let's enjoy a passenger view of the northern coastline of uh, Mallorca. Let's have a look at the automatic activation of the approach phase. And uh, for that, we have to overfly the pseudo deceleration waypoint in NAF mode. And since it is magenta, um, the activation should automatically occur. And then the target speed will drop down to the, the approach speed. So there it is, automatic activation and uh, the commanded speed is now the approach and of course the um, the auto thrust system will only go down to green dot speed um, 
that's the limit speed at the moment for clean configuration and in managed speed the auto thrust will respect that limit right with arm the localizer and the glide slope i.e. the approach mode I'm just uh, slowly decelerating towards green dot look star just intercept and localizer now So we're going to continue to descend down to the final approach altitude of 2,500 feet. And we're going to jump forward towards uh, the point where we intercept the glide slope. So we have selected flaps 1. Speed is now at S speed. And that is exactly the configuration we would like to have. Um, we have almost well, we have no wind at all. So S speed, glide slope intercept, flaps 1 just gonna set the go around altitude now and I'm gonna just monitor the approach however um, 2500 feet means that's already pretty um, low and at around 2300 feet I'm gonna select flaps 2 and just be aware here that we have some higher terrain below us now and so the radial altimeter is uh, showing uh, less than 2000 feet height above the terrain however the interesting thing is the threshold elevation that's the point at which we orientate ourselves right so we've selected flaps two gears coming down and so again guys we are aiming for a stable condition with One full five. configuration and airspeed on glide slope on localizer at 1000 feet above the threshold threshold elevation is about 30 feet So there we go, flaps are now full. Still have a little bit to go on the airspeed. However, we still have about 500 feet to lose. That should work out nicely. And the main goal, again guys, it is to have idle power in the approach. That's very fuel efficient and also um, creates uh, less noise for all the people on the ground. We're approaching a thousand feet above the threshold. Airspeed is fine. We are on localizer on glide slope. Final configuration is set. Landing checklist has been read. And so we'll continue manually. Five hundred. So manual thrust as well. And let's just fully concentrate on the landing. Make sure we get a nice uh, touchdown. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. That should do nicely. Reverse green, spoilers. Oh, no, auto brake. So manual brakes. We have 70 knots closing the reverses. And there you have it. That's the decelerated approach technique. And so let's now talk about the stabilized or early stabilized approach technique. And for this, let's have a look at a picture again. So the early stabilized approach refers to a technique where the aircraft reaches the final descent point or the final approach fix in the landing configuration and at the approach speed. And in order to get that um, planned a little bit better in the FMS, um, there's a little trick that you can do. Um, if you enter the V approach as a speed constraint at the final approach fix, then the deceleration point um, will be brought forward in the uh, flight plan. And so you have more time for the deceleration phase um, before the final approach fix. Now, 
the reason for an early stabilized approach uh, might be, for example, when you're flying a non-precision approach, where you try to avoid large configuration changes during the final descent, which usually means um, a destabilization in the vertical path. And so to make uh, the final descent smoother without any big um, trim requirements, um, it is advisable to be fully configured gear and flaps and the final approach speed at the final approach fix. Another reason could be a very low final approach altitude. For example, there are some approaches, uh, some ILS approaches where the um, final altitude is about only 1,500 feet above the um, threshold. And so again, in order to make everything a lot more stable for the final descent, um, it is advisable to plan a early stabilized approach. So let's have a look again how that looks like in practice. So again, we're inbound to Mallorca, but this time we're gonna fly the NDB approach zero, uh, two four left. So we've done all the preparations and we can see that the pseudo deceleration point is uh, inserted again. And as we've said before, um, it's advisable to have the FMS plan a optimum deceleration point is to enter the speed constraint at the descent point. In this case is Charlie Sierra Tango of the V approach speed. I'm going to enter the V approach speed now, 136, and you'll see the pseudo deceleration waypoint move ever so slightly towards um, our position, meaning that the deceleration phase is obviously going to be started earlier. And so now our concern is that we monitor the approach and the descent, and then make sure that at Charlie Sierra Tango, at the final approach fix, we are in full landing configuration and at the final approach speed. And we're passing the deceleration point again. And so the approach phase activates automatically. All right. I'm going to jump forward to the point where we start our configuration. So here we are, flaps one. About five miles from the final descent point. And that should be plenty of time to configure down to the final configuration and uh, have the final approach speed. All right, we're gonna have S speed now. And flaps two. Gear down. Now the other thrust uh, manages the thrust so that we can decelerate down to F speed as long as uh, the flaps are two. But as we mentioned, we will configure the aircraft fully now. So press the approach mode, final approach now active, flaps three, and flaps full. One and a half miles to go to our descent point. And there we are, final configuration, V approach, and now we can do a very stable and continuous final descent.
being in a final configuration also gives you the um, capacity to watch over the approach more closely. Um, so we don't have to divert your attention um, to the configuration changes. So now we're just waiting for the beacon needle to uh, fall over, indicating that right overhead the station and right overhead our final approach fix. Here it is, monitoring the out of flight system now, starting the final approach descent. And so we have a nice uh, capacity to check the crossing altitudes on our charts and just monitor the approach. Skipped forward again uh, in order to avoid the video becoming too long. So we're seeing the runway approaching the minimum. So we'll take over controls now. Manual flight. Flight track is off. Flight path vector on. And then we'll very smoothly adjust our flight path to intercept the final approach track and being aware of the fact that we have a good crosswind of 20 knots from the right. Nicely stable in the uh, correct position here, on path, on center line, on speed. And all that's left to do now is have a smooth touchdown. Very nice. Again, checking reverse green spoilers and deceleration. All right, so that's the early stabilized approach for you. Um, these are the two approach types that are written in the uh, FCOMs, um, in the Airbus uh, 320 FCOMs, that is. And the important thing to remember is that these procedures aren't carved in stone. Um, you are allowed to vary those approaches or uh, approach types um, depending on the conditions, um, weather conditions sometimes uh, play a role and sometimes you have um, very strange <laughs> approaches themselves where you have very high final approach altitudes for example. And I will show you this in the example of Geneva, runway 23, Eilis approach where the final approach altitude is 7,000 feet. But before I do that, um, I just want to demonstrate you um, what happens if you're not in NAV mode and um, you are overflying the pseudo deceleration waypoint. So when I select heading now, um, you can see that the color of the pseudo waypoint changes from magenta to white and that indicates that the automatic approach activation will not work. So we're just about to pass over that waypoint and if you look closely at the MCDU 
you'll see that the approach phase does not activate automatically. And there you go. And so in this case, you have to activate the approach phase manually. And once you do that, the new target speed becomes the approach and the auto thrust will reduce the speed. And since we are still very high above the threshold elevation, um, the threshold elevation in Geneva is uh, 1,370 feet roundabout. And so we'll try to initially fly the descent in clean configuration. And we'll do that until we reach about, well, 2,800 to 2,500 feet above the threshold elevation and then start uh, configuring the aircraft. Of course, if the aircraft is um, maintaining the glide slope but slowly increasing speed, well, then we have to become active and select uh, flaps 1. So still in clean configuration, intercepting the glide slope, and let's have a look how it goes. So all is fine, um, we're not increasing speed, it's still maintaining green dot speed, pretty much idle power. So um, yeah, we are saving fuel right now because we haven't uh, selected config one and uh, inducing drag unnecessarily in this case. Okay, we are between 2800 and 2500 feet above ground, so it's starting our configuration now, flaps one. And we can see that, well, it doesn't really induce that much drag at the moment. Speed isn't decreasing as fast as I would like. And so non-standard, I'm going to select the gear down. That definitely induces drag. And once the gear is down, we'll continue with the configuration, config 2, 3 and then 4. Here we are, config is now full, gear is down, landing checklist, Ikamimo landing, no blue. And now all that's left to do is let the speed stabilize at the approach. And that should be once we reach uh, 1000 feet above the threshold. So there we are, everything's stable, meeting all the limits. 1, and so again, let's concentrate on trying to get a smooth touchdown. And so this concludes the video about approach techniques. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it and maybe learned a thing or two. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I will try to answer them as uh, quickly as I can. And as always, guys, thanks for your support. 
and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Happy landings.